Okay. So what is an arithmetic sequence? This would be a sequence A1 through AN. And infinitely beyond. That has an addition or subtraction common difference between terms. So for example, if I have the sequence negative 3, 2, 7, 12, and so on, this would be an arithmetic sequence because from term 1 to term 2, I added 5. From term 2 to term 3, I added 5. From term 3 to term 4, I added 5. So between each one of my terms, I have a constant positive 5 difference. That is what makes this arithmetic. So if it's a constant addition or a constant subtraction that is the same number each time, that, that makes it arithmetic. So the way that we find our difference, which we use D to denote. Is that R difference? R. Did I forget R? I did. I did too. It was up and it wasn't the same. There you go. I fixed it. To find our common difference D, we do A of K plus 1 minus A of K. And we should test it on a couple different sets of terms. So test it with term 1 and term 2, test it with term 2 and term 3, and again with term 3 and term 4, we should have at least 3 to compare. So on this one, we had 3, and that's how we knew they were all going to be the same because it didn't change in those 3. So what we're going to do is an example, and we're going to ask you to show that a given sequence is arithmetic, and then to find the common difference. The entire lesson is about arithmetic sequences, the different things that we can do with them. Would that be in short? Uh, maybe, maybe not. So it gave us a sequence 1, 4, 7, 10, and so on. It's a sequence that follows the rule 3n minus 2. We are asked to determine whether it, whether it is arithmetic and then to find that common difference. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to test the difference between two consecutive terms, but we're going to pick three sets of two consecutive terms. And if they come out to have the same difference between them, that is our common difference D. So we're going to start by testing the difference between term 2 and term 1. Term 2 here is 4. Term 1 is 1, which makes their difference 3. Do we all see how I came up with that? That is one set of consecutive terms. Now we're going to test another one. So I'm going to test term 3 and term 2. So I'm going to do term 3 minus term 2, which means 7 minus 4. And again, that gave me a difference of 3. So, so far, we are off to a good start. Again, we have to have three differences to ensure that we are correct. So I need to do another set of consecutive terms. Which consecutive terms do you think I'm going to use now? 3 and 4. Because I used 1 and 2 and 2 and 3. 
Now we need to use three and four. We're going to do A4 minus A3. Go ahead, Kim. My fourth term is 10 minus my third term, which was 7, gives me a difference of 3. Are all of my differences the same? Yes, which means that my common difference is equal to what? So D here equals 3. And it is arithmetic because all three of those were the same. How do we feel about that? So far, so good? Yeah. Nothing majorly concerning? Okay, so let's do another example. This one's going to be a little bit different. So this time we're going to be looking for the formula for the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. It is good to know that they actually have kind of like a rule to find an explicit nth term formula, and that is a of n equals my first term plus my desired term minus 1 times the common difference d. So this is actually what we're going to be using when I ask for an nth term rule for a given sequence. There is a proof for this if you ever want to look at it, but I don't think we really need it. So the example we're going to do is given the first three terms of sequence. And if those three terms are 20, 16.5, and 13, find the 15th term. We're going to use our explicit rule formula up here to write that explicit rule for this given sequence. So I need to know two things before I can write this explicit rule. What two things do I need to know officially? A1 and, and my common difference D. So those are the two things that I need to identify. Do I have any of that right now? Right, do I have any of that here already? Do I have my first term or my common difference explicitly stated in the problem? What do we think? Which one do I have? The first term. That's kind of hard to always know, but if it gives you a sequence, assume that where the sequence started is our first term. So here, A of 1 is going to equal 20. Now, the only thing I still need to find is my common difference, D. It already told me that this is an arithmetic sequence, so I can assume that the difference I find between term 1 and term 2 will be the same difference I would find between all of my other consecutive terms. So I don't need to do it three times if it already said that my sequence is arithmetic. So to find my common difference D, I'm going to do term 2 minus term 1. So A of 2 minus A of 1. My second term here is 16.5. My first term is 20. And that's going to give me my common difference of negative 3.5. That negative is important. It has to stay with my difference D. Because that tells me instead of adding 3.5 from term to term, I'm subtracting 3.5 from term to term. Now I have enough information to go ahead and write my explicit rule and then to find my 15th term. So my explicit rule, A of N, is going to equal my first term, 20, plus n minus 1 times my difference of negative 3 and a half. So this is my explicit rule. 
And then I can use this to find the 15th track. Colin, how would I do that? Say it louder. Just plug 15 in for N, solve it out with a calculator, and I'm good to go. So my 15th term would be A of 15, and that's going to equal 20 plus 15 minus 1 times the negative 3 and a half. I'm going to let you plug it into your calculator and get our answer. What do we get? Negative 29. Everyone should plug it in, though, to make sure you got the same thing. Are there any major questions, concerns, or issues about how I use this generic formula to write my explicit rule and then to evaluate at a specific term? Is there any confusion about how I use this for this problem? No, are we all okay? All okay. Okay, let's do another example. So this problem says if the fourth term of an arithmetic sequence is 5 and the ninth term is 20, find the first and the sixth terms. Anybody have an idea of where we could start for this one? Well, I don't know what my terms are. I only have two of them. What did you say, Becca? I'm going to use my formula for A of N because I technically have two unknowns. So there are other ways that you could solve this, but this one is guaranteed to give us the right answer with the smallest amount of mishaps that could happen. Okay, so there are other ways of finding it, and if you see those, that's fine as well, but this one's guaranteed to work every time. I'm going to use that formula because I have so many unknowns and I have to find a way of systematically solving it. So I'm going to use the two terms that I do have. It's that I have the fourth term, so I have A of 4, and I have the ninth term, which is A of 9. It tells me that my fourth term is equal to 5, and I know that that is equal to my first term plus My 4 minus 1 times D. This, of course, simplifies out beautifully into 5 equals A of 1 plus 3D. Do we all see what I did there? I left the A1 blank and the D blank because I don't know what they are. N minus 1 was 4 minus 1, which turned into 3, and it told me that my fourth term was 5. Do we all see how I plugged that in? Same thing for the ninth term. It told me the ninth term is equal to 20. I know by the formula that that means 20 equals A of 1 plus 20 minus 1. Oh my gosh. 9 minus 1 times D. And this is going to simplify out beautifully into 20 plus A of 1. 20 equals A of 1 plus 8D. It's Monday longest Monday ever. 
And now I'm kind of stuck. How am I not stuck, Gabe? Perfect. So I need to find a way to get each of these technically down to one variable that they have in common, and then I can set them equal to each other. The easiest thing here to identify that they share is A1. So I'm going to rewrite each of my equations so it's solved for A1, and then I'm going to set them equal to each other. So this top one, if I want to get A1 by itself, I'm going to subtract the 3D. So this becomes A of 1 equals 5 minus 3D. My bottom one, same concept. I want to get A1 by itself, so I'm going to subtract the 8D. When I do, I get A1 equals 20 minus 8D. And now I can set them equal to each other because they're both equal to A1. So then I get 5 minus 3D equals 20 minus 8D. And I'm going to pause here before we continue solving. Uh, as it looks right now, this is probably going to be a two-day lesson. Everyone okay to this point? Awesome. So now what am I going to do? Solve for D. So I need to get all my Ds on the same side. I'm going to add this one to the left. And then I'm going to subtract this 5 to the right. When I do, I'm left with 5D equals 15. I divide each side by 5, and I get D equals 3. Are we all okay there? Now what can I do? Because it asked me to find the first term and the sixth term. Perfect. I can take this D and put it back into either one of these equations, and that will allow me to solve my first term, A1. And then I can write my generic uh, explicit rule formula and then plug in 6 for N and solve for my sixth term. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it back into this bottom one because it's right there. When I do, I get A of 1 equals 20 minus 8 times 3 which becomes 20 minus 24, which means A of 1 equals negative 4. So that's my first term. And now I can go ahead and write the explicit rule, which is A of N equals my first term, negative 4, plus N minus 1 times my common difference of 3. And now I can solve for A of 6, which is the other desired answer here. And when I do, I should get A of 6 equals 11. No, we should probably definitely do at least one more thing. I will say the hardest part for tomorrow, though. Right? That's why it was nice. Yes, ma'am. Uh, at least half of it, probably more. Yeah. I'll have to look and just see how it plays out day of tomorrow. Okay, everyone okay with this? We're going to do one more thing today, and that is formulas for partial sums of arithmetic sequences. <laughs> and that is our beautiful S of N that we had before. There are two versions of this formula. I will write both of them, and it's kind of up to you which one you choose to use. The first one is that S of N 
equals n divided by 2 of 2 times my first term plus n minus 1 times d. So that is the first one. What do you mean first? I said there are two versions. <laughs> the second version is s of n equals n divided by 2 of a of 1 plus a of n. It is your choice which one you choose so to use. Yeah, it just depends on what you've been given and what you feel comfortable using and plugging in. Absolutely. Okay, you guys ready? Yeah, awesome. We're just going to do one example and then we can call it a day. This, uh, oh my gosh, this example asks us to find the sum of all of the even terms from 2 to 100. So what this means is I have a sequence that is all the even terms. And we are going all the way up through 100. We could use either one of these two S of N formulas that it gave me, which one do you think is gonna be the easiest to use with what we've been given? The second one, because I don't have to find a common difference for the second one. The hardest thing I have to do here is I have to figure out how many terms I'm adding together because that's what the N is. So if I'm going from zero to 100 and I'm adding all of the even terms, how many terms do I have all together? 50. So my n value here equals 50. I know that a of 1, which is where I'm starting, is 2. And I know that the 50th term I'm adding is 100 because that told me it told me that's where I'm stopping. And now I can just go ahead and plug it into that bottom formula, which says that s of 50 equals 50 divided by 2 times a of 1 plus a of 50. And then I can just plug it into a calculator. And we'll get our partial sum of the first 50 terms of this sequence. I have no idea what you just said, Gabe. Oh, okay, sorry. Mental math, right? Two thousand five hundred and fifty. Two thousand five hundred and fifty. So my partial sum of the first fifty terms of the sequence, in other words, the even numbers from two to one hundred, is equal to two thousand five hundred and fifty. How do we feel about that? How do we feel about everything so far today? Not terrible? Okay, so we still have half of the notes to go roughly, but you can definitely do half the homework now and we will just finish up the notes tomorrow. You know, we could technically finish today. There's still 20 minutes left.